President, please be seated. The floor is Président, êtes-vous êtes prêt Êtes-vous prêt Président, Bonjour, Monsieur Good morning once again, Mr. Paisoka. President, once again, Bonjour, good morning, Peixoka. Mr. Pexoka. Witness. Témoin. Good morning, once again, Mr. President. Bonjour, Mr. President, Président. now we Président. resume our Nous allons reprendre. hearing. And the floor is given La to the legal lawyer for civil party. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Rebonjour, Monsieur le Témoin. C'est à nouveau euh, Marie Guiraud de l'autre côté de l'écran. J'ai quelques courtes questions à, à vous poser. Nous nous étions arrêtés sur la présence de, de soldats de la zone armée de AK-47 qui patrouillaient sur les chantiers et... Vous nous aviez donné une réponse juste avant la pause sur la notion d'ennemi. Je vous posais la question de savoir ce que cela voulait dire pour vous être un ennemi Je voulais vous faire réagir à ce qu'a déclaré le témoin avant vous, qui était donc chef d'unité sur le barrage à la même période que la vôtre. Le coprocureur lui a posé une question que je vais lire et je vais vous lire également sa réponse et je voulais savoir ce que vous en pensez. Et nous sommes à 11h30 hier. Donc le coprocureur pose la question suivante. Je voulais revenir sur le thème ennemis. Pouvait-on taxer d'ennemis des gens qui n'atteignaient pas les quotas ou qui ne transportaient pas suffisamment de terre, par exemple 
Et le témoin précédent, qui était chef d'unité sur le chantier, donc qui n'avait pas la même fonction que la vôtre, a indiqué, d'après ce que les gens disaient, on considérait que ces personnes étaient des ennemis infiltrés et que c'était les personnes qui obstruaient le progrès ou le mouvement. Est-ce qu'à l'époque, monsieur le témoin, vous avez vous aussi entendu ces raisons et que les ennemis étaient des gens qui obstruaient le progrès le mouvement In my opinion, I heard people saying about enemies and for what categories of enemy there were in that area, I cannot give any description. Quand vous parlez de catégories d'ennemis, qu'entendez-vous par là What do you mean by that? Witness, when I, re I am referring to category of enemies, I do not know uh, what other witness witnesses uh, said about enemies, and I do not know how many categories of enemies were there at that site. I really do not know. Merci, Monsieur le témoin. Ce qui est important pour nous aujourd'hui, c'est de savoir ce que vous nous dites et pas nécessairement ce qu'ont dit les, les précédents témoins. Donc, je, je suis intéressé par ce que vous saviez à l'époque, ce que vous avez vu à l'époque. Donc, n'hésitez pas à nous dire spontanément ce dont vous vous souvenez. Est-ce que pour vous, les, les deux personnes de votre unité qui, qui ont disparu et dont vous avez parlé ce matin ont été considérées à l'époque comme, comme des ennemis I do not know. What I know is that they disappeared. I do not know what happened to them. Quelle était la conclusion que vous aviez tirée à l'époque suite à la disparition de vos deux amis, de vos deux collègues bah, euh You do not need to give your response to the question put to you, Mr. Witness. Such question should not be asked. You cannot ask the witness to give any conclusion because this witness is not an expert witness. Je, je n'insisterai pas, Monsieur le Président, mais respectueusement, this, il est permis de poser respect, aux, aux témoins des questions sur ce qu'ils ont vécu, et c'est précisément ce que j'ai essayé de faire. J'ai essayé de poser une question sur le ressenti, sur le vécu du témoin à l'époque. Donc je, je m'arrête là parce que je, je, me, je me plie à votre, à votre jugement, mais je considère que cette, cette question était parfaitement en ligne avec les questions qui sont autorisées devant ce, devant ce tribunal. Monsieur le témoin, je, je, vais, je vais enchaîner. Vous avez indiqué tout à l'heure à ma consoeur que les, les travailleurs sur le chantier étaient, euh, somme toute, d'apparence tout à fait normale. Vous aviez eu des déclarations un petit peu différentes devant les, les enquêteurs, puisque vous aviez indiqué, et je suis ici, ERN en français 004 2239 ERN en anglais 004-03005 et ERN en Khmer 0038-95-23. Vous avez indiqué, lorsqu'il vous était posé la question sur l'état de santé des habitants, que l'état de santé n'était pas bon. Les habitants avaient une mauvaise santé. Et puis vous expliquez par la suite qu'il y avait des soignants et qu'il y avait une infirmerie. Qu'est-ce que vous pouvez nous dire aujourd'hui sur, sur ces observations que vous faisiez à l'époque Est-ce que vous, vous confirmez 
que les, les travailleurs n'étaient pas en bon état de santé. je vous remercie, Monsieur le Thank témoin. Je voulais simplement vous faire remarquer que votre réponse en 2009 uh, était bien différente et que vous aviez noté à l'époque que l'état de santé des travailleurs n'était pas bon. Uh, J'ai une dernière question. Vous avez déjà été uh, interrogé sur uh, les conditions d'hygiène sur le, sur le, le chantier. Le témoin qui vous a précédé euh, nous a indiqué qu'il y avait un, un nombre particulièrement important de mouches sur le chantier qui semblait être attribué du coup à un, un manque d'hygiène. Est-ce que c'est quelque chose que vous avez observé Je Le témoin nous, the nous disait que c'était particulièrement gênant et que c'était aussi gênant quand, a, euh, quand les personnes mangeaient. Est-ce que and it was a concrètement, when combien y avait-il de so, mouches et quel désagrément cela vous posait-il Quand je dis combien, je, je ne vous demande bien évidemment pas un, un nombre précis, M. le témoin, mais une, une indication, parce qu'il euh, s'avère en, en lisant les différents témoignages que cette question est particulièrement euh, prégnante sur ce chantier en particulier, donc j'aimerais avoir vos, vos observations là-dessus. Je m'arrêterai sur cette phrase, monsieur le témoin. Well, Je vous remercie d'avoir répondu that. à mes questions. Uh, Merci, witness, monsieur le Président. Merci pour répondre à mes questions. Merci, monsieur le Président. Je suis terminé avec mon examen. Merci, monsieur le Président. Le floor est donné à la défense de 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 la You may not proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. Good morning, Your Honours. Good morning, Council. Good morning, uh, Mr. Witness. Um, I have a few questions to you. I don't think very many. Um, I would like to start with you by going back to something you said yesterday about your education. Uh, when you went to the school in uh, Rusei Keu in Phnom Penh, um, and uh, when you were speaking yesterday about uh, around 100 students who were in your class, um, I was wondering whether you know whether before your class Uh, that lasted for six months. There was also uh, another class, another year of students. Or were you, was your class the first class at that school? Would you, do you know?
In relation to my education at that place, I would like to inform the court that uh, before I was sent to school there, I have no idea whether or not there had been a course before the time that I was there. Very well, thank you. Um, in your statement um, to the investigators, Mr. Witness, um, on the very first, the very first question, um, that is English ERN 0040 3002, Khmer 0039520, and French 0042236. Um, you, you said, and I quote, they had many fields of study, public work, car repairing, lath machine, agriculture, irrigation, hydroelectricity, and the iron. And then you said, I was interested in uh, the irrigation and uh, hydroelectricity. Uh, do you remember why at the time you were particularly interested in that subject? Witness, as for uh, my interest in the subject, uh, because the, the field of irrigation and hydroelectricity are of my interest. That is why I decided to uh, take uh, that field. I, I understand that, um, and I realize it's a long time ago, but do you remember why that uh, particular field um, was of so much interest to you? Witness, I cannot give any further elaboration on this field. Uh, I, to me, I am uh, very interested in the irrigation, irrigation and hydroelectricity. That is why I decided to take the course. That's what I can explain. Uh, do you remember that in 1976 um, the country was uh, hit by a drought? Answer. I could not uh, remember it. Um, when you uh, finished your six month study uh, in Phnom Penh uh, in the field of irrigation and uh, hydroelectricity. Um, do you remember whether you were um, happy to start working at um, uh, one of the uh, dam constructions in the country, or you don't remember that? Witness, during that time, it's not a matter of happiness or not. The matter is that Anka assigned me to do the work, assigned us to do the work, so we had to do it. Um, let me now take you to the actual work uh, at the dam site. Um, Mr. Witness, um, do you recall uh, what, if any, uh, machinery was used at the dam site? De ce qui était utilisé en termes de machines ou de machines outils, s'il y en avait sur le chantier. Answer: I could remember it. We. So oui, machinery, there Nous were avons vu des uh, machines. bulldozers, there were excavators. Il y avait des bulldozers. Il y avait um, do you recall des at the time at the work site how many 
of these bulldozers and excavators uh, were in operation. Yes, I cannot recall the numbers uh, because I was not the one who in charge, who was in charge in the, the machinery. Um, in your statement to the investigators, um, English 0040304, French um, 0042238, and command 0038-9523, um, you said that excavators and machineries uh, were used um, to dig up rock. Um, a little further, you also indicate that uh, gunpowder was used uh, to break the rock. Um, is that a f fair description of the reason of use of these machines and the gunpowder? La raison pour laquelle on utilisait les machines et la poudre. I stated earlier, comme je l'ai dit un peu plus tôt, nothing else uh, was there, only the things that I described uh, yesterday. But is it correct that um, when at the site rocky bottom uh, was located, that uh, it was the machines that were used um, uh, to work over there, uh, or explosives, rather than uh, human forces? Uh, du travail humain. Answer. I stated yesterday that what I Réponse. could see, whether hier, uh, it's correct to use the machines or explosive, I uh, have no idea. Si c'est exact d'utiliser des correct d'utiliser des um, machines ou des explosifs, je n'en sais rien. Um, Mr. Bittes, yesterday you spoke about your three direct colleagues. Um, do you know whether there were any uh, other technicians or engineers uh, working at the dam site? I don't understand your question. Um, you were a surveyor, uh, you were working in a team of four people. Um, so um, I just refer to you as a, as a technician or an engineer. Uh, do you know if there were other people like you working at the work site, uh, supervising the work at the dam? Uh, I knew only that there was a group of four technicians. I didn't know whether there were other groups. Uh, thank you. Um, now, Mr. Witness, you also testified yesterday and, and before the investigators that um, people who were working at the work site were um, asked or requested or instructed to uh, carry around two cubic meters per person of soil. Um, do you know on which calculation it was based in the time that people had to, on average, carry two cubic meters of soil uh, per person? I learned of Réponse. that information through the announcement over the loudspeaker, and I did not know if uh, each worker could 
complete that over a quarter si of two cubic meters soil per day. But do you have any knowledge, maybe from your uh, studies in the school in Phnom Penh, why it was two cubic meters on average per person? And not, for instance, uh, one and a half or two and a half uh, cubic meter per person. What, why was it that it was calculated that an average person could carry two cubic meter uh, soil per person? I cannot respond to that question since I do not know about it. Je peux pas répondre à cette question. Je n'en sais rien. Very well. Thank you. Do you know, maybe also based on your studies or on your conversations with your colleagues, uh, why it was that um, approximately 20,000 people um, of labor force were needed at the construction of the dam, why it was, why 20,000, why for instance not 25,000 or 15,000? Do you have any idea as to the reasons of this particular number of people? No, I don't have that knowledge. And as to the number of the workers or the reasons, I had no idea. And I heard about the uh, total numbers through the announcement over the loudspeaker. Um, thank you for that answer, Mr. Witness. Um, now I have some follow-up questions in relation to uh, working conditions uh, at the dam site. Um, I noted down a few of your answers that you gave yesterday uh, and also before the uh, investigators. You said that uh, people worked uh, mostly uh, during the daytime. Uh, once in a while, you said uh, they were asked to strive to work hard. Um, before the investigators, you said that they could take a rest, a rest once finished uh, and digging and carrying the soil early. Uh, and that um, within uh, the various periods of the day they had a 15-minute break. Um, did I, in general terms, summarize correctly uh, what you said in relation to uh, working times and conditions? I'm sorry, but I don't get your question. Réponse. Excusez-moi, mais je n'ai pas bien compris votre question. I just gave you a few quotes from your own testimony, um, uh, both yesterday and before the investigators. And my question simply was whether I adequately uh, summed up what you said in terms of uh, working hours at the work site. I'd be happy to repeat them for you. Um, you said that the workers worked mostly daytime, that once in a while they were asked to strive to work hard, uh, that they could take a rest once uh, they finished digging and carrying early, and that every uh, part of the day they had a 15-minute break. Is that a fair summary of um, the working times? Your Honor. Mr. President, before the witness answers, uh, I, I simply don't see the point of this question. Uh, counsel is purporting to summarize evidence that he says is on the record. Uh, these are not direct quotes. They're paraphrases. Uh, the evidence is already on the record. There's no reason to repeat it in this way and get the witness to adopt counsel's summary of his testimony when we have the witness's testimony before us. I think I'm at liberty to ask the questions that I think I should ask. Um, all of the four quotes that I gave were literal quotes, both from the testimony um, and um, his written um, statement. So I think I should be able to ask whether this is a fair summary of um, what he has said or what he has testified so far on working hours. 
Your Honor, if there are literal quotes, then the, the question is even more pointless. Uh, the evidence is already on the record. He's asking the witness, essentially, what is the evidence on the record? There's no reason to do that. And if the quotes are not accurate, then it leads to a, an introduced contradiction. Council, before we make a decision, um, is the objective of this summary of yours um, to lay the foundation for further related questions, or is it summarizing for summarizing's sake? Um, I'll move on, uh, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Witness, um, I would like to ask you specific questions in relation to uh, working times. Um, in your statement to the investigators, English page 0040306, let me see if I have the French ERN 00422241 and Khmer 00389524, you said that the working times at the dam site were um, from 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. in the morning, in the afternoon from uh, 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, during the working hours, you said they were allowed, the workers were allowed to have a 15-minute break, and at night, the work started from 6.30 p.m. to 10 p.m. Uh, I will get back to the question on the night. Uh, time later, but I have a question to you. Do you know why uh, people uh, didn't work between 11 and 2 p.m.? I don't know the reason, however, we were allowed to rest uh, during that period. Um, do you know whether these three hours of rest um, during the day between 11 and 2 p.m. had something to do with that period in time being the hottest time of the day? Ma. Yes, uh, during the day, that Réponse. was the hottest period. Have you ever heard at the time Question. that that was the reason um, to allow all 20,000 workers a break of three hours? Ma. 
No, I don't. Réponse non. I simply knew that was the period that we were allowed to rest. Où nous avions le droit de nous reposer. Um, this 15 minute Question. break that you spoke about in your um, written statement. Um, was this 15 minute break coming every day at around the same time? And if yes, was it announced over uh, the complete work site at the time? Um, what do you remember about this, uh, these 15 minute breaks uh, during working hours? I recall that Réponse. for each morning and afternoon session and about in the middle of the uh, combined time for each session, the workers were allowed to have uh, that uh, short break. Nous avions le droit de nous nous and do you remember whether that was uh, centrally announced maybe through loudspeakers so that all workers at the same time uh, sat down to have their 15 minute breaks in the various parts of the day yes uh, the announcement was made through the uh, loudspeaker, uh, that is the time to have a rest non, and the time to resume to the work. And did the loudspeaker Question. announce also the beginning of the three-hour break uh, around lunchtime? and the end of that three-hour break, was it also centri centrally announced through the loudspeakers? Yes. Réponse, oui. Um, did you ever see anybody... Question. Um, instructed uh, ordered to work during these three hours of break, respectively these uh, 50 minute breaks? I didn't try to make that observation. Je n'ai même pas essayé de le voir sur place. Um, then working um, at the night time, question. I have a, an additional follow-up question on this. You said that um, people uh, worked at night uh, as well, Vous avez dit que les gens devaient travailler as I understood, nuit, uh, not, not always and not regularly. Um, following up on that observation, um, have you ever heard of Suite à ce que vous an announcement ce sujet, uh, which was also si uh, related in a revolutionary flag magazine of 1977 in relation to the benefits and the disadvantages of uh, working at night time? No, I did not know about that. Non. Um, allow me, Mr. Witness, to Question. read a very small excerpt si from témoin, a, a revolutionary flag uh, to you. It is uh, Mr. President, document E3-170, uh, uh, English ERN 00182578. French 00665429 and on that particular page of this revolutionary flag I read the following our past uh, has experienced uh, the being being that the profitable aspects passé, of night work are small, whereas there are a lot of costly aspects. One, adverse effect on health. Un impact, un impact Two, expenditure of, elec of electricity. Three, but the biggest enfin, losses are political and ideological. Les, les uh, have you ever heard 
um, at the time any remarks from your superiors or others that working at night according to the revolutionary flag or the CPK had adverse effects on the health of the people? No, I did not hear about that Réponse. statement. Non, je n'en ai pas entendu parler. Je n'ai pas entendu cela. Uh, what about the availability of electricity uh, at the dam site? L'électricité um, disponible sur le chantier. What do you remember about um, the possibility of having electricity for the night time? Vous souvenir, était-il possible d'avoir de l'électricité le soir ou la nuit? sur le chantier. I recall that at night time the, there Réponse, was electricity for the uh, lighting purpose. La nuit, l'électricité était, était utilisée à des fins d'éclairage. Um, very well. My last question um, in relation bien, to workforce, uh, etc. Um, is do you know whether within the group of the big group of 20,000 workers there were also ro uh, there was also a rotation of workforces that uh, workforces who were there were at one point replaced by other workforces uh, in other words 20,000 people or so who were working uh, during a period of six months or longer, we're not always the same. Do you have any knowledge about that? President, uh, Mr. Witness, uh, please hold on. Mr. Pesekar, please hold on. And the Council for the Civil Parties, you have the floor. This evening, thank you, Mr. Uh, President. I'd like to Merci, make my objection to this question. Defense Council Copper put a question to the witness by quoting the number of around 20,000 workers. This day and also this morning, Hier, the witness confirms that he does not know about the totality of the workers at the work site and that he knows only about uh, his own group. And that is the best for my objection. Thank you. I, I think, and I don't think we um, dispute that, that there were approximately 20,000 workers. And I believe even this witness uh, testified to the approximate, approximate of that number. So I think I'll be able to ask that question. President, the objection by the Lawyer for civil parties is overruled, and the witness can respond to that. The nature of the work of the witness uh, was from the beginning of the dam construction work site to the end of uh, the length of the uh, dam. So it is appropriate for the witness to respond to that question. And please, Mr. Witness, respond to the last question put to you by the defense counsel. Witness. On the issue of the rotation of workforces, I have no knowledge about it. Very well, thank you, Mr. Witness. Um, now I would like to move on to the question on um, the medical situation, uh, health situation, but particularly yours. Um, did you yourself? At the time that you worked at the dam site, ever experienced illness, for instance, in the form of having uh, diarrhea, uh, having fever, uh, etc.? And if yes, um, do you remember whether you were provided medicine and whether you subsequently were cured of your um, sickness? Person, 
but I myself uh, contracted a fever at the time, Réponse. and I was uh, given uh, some tablets, fièvre, and I recovered uh, from the illness. In your uh, statement to the investigators in, on this matter, that is um, ERN 00403004 in English, um, French 00422240 sorry, and Khmer 00389523, you said that the medicine that was given to you uh, was effective. Um, the medicine that was given to you was effective for you. Have, were you able to observe whether other people uh, that you saw and who had been sick and who had been given medicine uh, were subsequently cured uh, and that apparently the medicine was effective? I cannot say anything about that as I had nothing to do with the medical unit or with the medicine. Um, very well, Mr. Witness, um, I don't have many more questions. Um, a very last question. Um, do you remember ever having seen any um, wedding ceremonies, mass wedding ceremonies uh, taking place at the 1st January dam site. Personally, I never witnessed any marriage ceremony. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Witness. You have been very helpful. Thank you. Question. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup pour votre aide, Monsieur le Témoin. President, thank you. Le Président, merci. The Chamber now hands the floor to the Defence Council for a Q and Q. Council, you can proceed. Maître, vous avez la parole. Je vous remercie, Monsieur le Président. Bonjour, Monsieur Peksoka. Je m'appelle Antagissé et President. je suis co-avocat international de M. Kessampan et je vais vous poser quelques brèves questions de suivi par rapport à ce que vous avez dit ces deux derniers jours. Tout d'abord, un premier point dans votre déclaration E3-403 donnée devant les enquêteurs des causes d'instruction. Le RN en français est le 0042-2238, en anglais 0040304 et en Khmer 0038952. Voilà la question qui vous est posée ce jour-là à propos du plan euh, du barrage. Est-ce que vous pensez que le plan à partir duquel vous avez effectué le mesurage était conforme aux normes Votre réponse a été la suivante. Je pense que ce plan avait des fondements précis parce que si nous regardions de haut, nous trouverions des lignes horizontales tout à fait conformes aux normes. Fin de citation. Ma question sur ce point, monsieur le témoin, est de savoir si vous avez appris à lire un plan dans le cadre de votre formation à Rousseau Keo. Personally, my personal knowledge about the reading of the plan, about the irrigation, for instance, uh, I think the plan is proportionate and correct. Des plans d'irrigation, je pensais pouvoir dire que les plans étaient proportionnés et corrects. J'ai bien compris ce point-là. Ma question, c'était de savoir si c'était dans le cadre de votre formation que vous avez euh, appris à lire ce plan d'irrigation.
arpenter un terrain et c'est ce que j'ai fait sur également pour le site de construction du barrage. Et dans le cadre de votre formation d'arpenteur, est-ce que as on vous apprenait à lire des plans d'irrigation Were you also taught how to read irrigation plans No, I did not receive uh, that kind of a training. Non, je n'ai pas reçu ce genre de formation. Est-ce que c'est avec votre instructeur, ou votre supérieur Cham, que Was vous avez pu uh, discuter du plan et savoir qu'il était conforme Vous avez discuté du plan et vous avez pu savoir qu'il était en accord avec la scale. Cham n'a pas été en accord avec la scale. Cham n'a pas été en accord avec la scale. Cham n'a pas été en accord avec la scale. Cham n'a pas été en accord avec la scale than me and he told us that the plan was uh, proportionate and according to scale. Un autre point, Another um, point. Um, vous avez évoqué ce passage de votre déclaration avec mon confrère Copé, mais je voudrais uh, plus précisément uh, uh, y revenir, c'est uh, toujours à la même page, uh, uh, même URN page que je viens de citer. ERNs, just, uh, vous avez donc évoqué l'utilisation de machines d'excavateurs, uh, d'engins, et vous avez, et je vous cite, indiqué, j'ai entendu par le haut-parleur qu'on a déclaré aux compatriotes de faire attention parce qu'on devait se servir des explosifs afin d'extraire des pierres. Fin de citation. Est-ce que ce genre de message de sécurité était fréquent sur le chantier par les haut-parleurs en dehors de ces annonces de sécurité, est-ce qu'il y avait également des annonces en matière d'hygiène à l'égard des travailleurs sur le site Est-ce que vous vous souvenez si euh, des, les médecins euh, donnaient des consignes particulières, euh, au, que ce soit par haut-parleur ou par un autre bien, que ce soit par le biais de votre supérieur hiérarchique, mais est-ce que vous avez reçu des euh, instructions particulières en matière euh, médicale sur des euh, pratiques à adopter. Je ne m'en souviens pas. Vous avez évoqué euh, la you présence euh, de mouches avec euh, ma consoeur des parties civiles. Est-ce que vous vous souvenez si euh, il y a eu des mesures qui ont été prises sur euh, le chantier pour euh, faire en sorte de d'essayer de se débarrasser des mouches, par exemple l'utilisation de pesticides Est-ce que vous vous souvenez de cet événement Oui, effectivement, des pesticides étaient utilisés pour tuer toutes ces mouches. Est-ce que vous savez si euh, 
enfin, qui était en charge de charge de ces pesticides Est-ce que c'était euh, euh, une section particulière ou est-ce que vous ne savez pas Un, un autre passage de votre déclaration, euh, toujours E3403, ERN en français, 00422243, ERN en anglais, 00403008, et ERN en Khmer, 00389527. Vous évoquez un slogan que vous avez entendu disant ceci, quand il y a de l'eau, il y a des poissons, quand il y a du riz, il y a tout ce qu'il faut. Est-ce que euh, vous vous souvenez à quel moment vous avez entendu ce slogan et est-ce que c'était quelque chose qui était mis en avant dans le cadre du travail sur euh, le chantier du barrage Et ce sera ma dernière question. Quand il y a de l'eau, il y a des poissons. Est-ce que c'était... Quelque chose que vous aviez entendu pour la première fois euh, sur ce chantier ou c'était euh, une formule populaire euh, qui existait même avant le temps des Khmer Rouges Avant à quelle heure j'allais travailler sur le chantier Je pense qu'il doit y avoir un problème de traduction, parce que ma question était de savoir si uh, ce slogan, quand il y a de l'eau, il y a des poissons, si c'était un, une formule populaire qui existait avant le temps des Khmer Rouges, ou si c'est là une chose que vous avez entendue pour la première fois sur le chantier. I only heard the slogan or the saying at the work site. I had never heard it before the time that I was working at the work site. Monsieur le Président, j'en ai terminé. Je crois que mon frère Kong Samon a de brèves questions. Il est possible de terminer si vous accordez une brève prolongation ce matin. Je vous laisse. Je vous laisse. Monsieur le Président, Council, thank you, Mr. President. Good morning, uh, Mr. Peksoka. I have a few short questions. First, I would like to know, and I would like to hear your clarification concerning uh, the dam of 1st January dam. Uh, you said that the length of the 1st January dam was about 58 kilometers away. Does this land cover also the 6th January dam? Answer. As for the length of the dam, stated by me from my recollection, the total length of the combined dams was about uh, 60 kilometers or less than that, including the fitting canal. Cela englobe les 15 canaux. Merci. 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 Merci.
Witness, I cannot recall it. Quelle était la largeur du barrage Réponse, je ne m'en souviens pas. Counter, you stated that uh, you uh, défense, did not remember. So, vous vous en pas. was uh, there a particular place at uh, the dam which uh, consisted, uh, you know, which was bigger than the other area? Qui était plus Answer. grand que les autres I, uh, do not recall endroits it. du barrage Réponse, je ne m'en souviens pas. Counsel, thank you. Could you give uh, the clarification or the calculation about the soil uh, which was used to build the dam? Answer, I uh, could not uh, give any explanation in relation to this. Council, thank you very much. In relation to the written record of your statement, document E3-403 at Khmer EON 00 38 95 26. French EON is at 00 42 43. And English EON is at 00 40 08. I would like to quote your statement. When you were questioned about the 1st January dam and the 6th January dam, let me quote. The name of the 1st January dam uh, was given at the time that uh, Vietnamese troops uh, came into uh, the country. And it was also the date of the opening construction of the dam. De ou du début de la I du would like to seek your clarification in relation to the 6th uh, January <laughs> dam. You said that the 6th January dam uh, was named at the time that the Vietnamese troops uh, attacked uh, and went into the country. Answer. The group chief uh, told me that uh, the name uh, was uh, given at the time that uh, the troops, the Vietnamese troops, attacked and went into the country. Chama was my group uh, chief, and he told me about this. Council, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Witness. Uh, Mr. President, I conclude my line of questioning. President, thank you, Council. The hearing President. today comes to an end before the time planned by the chamber, and the hearing will not be held in the afternoon. The hearing will resume on Monday, starting from 9 a.m. And as for hearing the next in uh, next week, uh, we the chamber we are here. T two T C W eight five six eight five one rather. Thank you, Mr. Pekzaka, for Pekzaka your valuable time and thank you for giving your testimony via video link yesterday and today. And uh, your testi hier, testimony will contribute to the truth and uh, your the hearing of your testimony come to an end and I wish you uh, good health and best wishes. Mr. Petrka, thank you, Mr. President. Security personnel are instructed to bring uh, Mr. Kiyosampon and Mr. Nun Jie back to the detention facility and uh, bring them back on the 25th May 2015 before 9 a.m. The court is now adjourned.